It is of great interest to know where the Creator entered human history and became the God-man. I'm going to share some secrets with you. I'm going to tell you some things that heretofore we've not been able to talk about publicly. And I'm so glad that Nancy and Belinda came down to see us. Are both of you here? Yes, yes. I told them they needed to hear this portion, and they listened. This is part of our inner circle that makes it happen. It's of great interest to note where the Creator entered human history and become the God-man. Alfred Edersheim explains the significance of Migdal Eder, the Tower of the Flock, as the actual place where this long-awaited one was born. Gary and Connie, what year did you go with me to Israel? 2009. I did take you to the Tower of the Flock and we performed a cleaning exercise there. Wasn't that fun? Now we're going to get some scriptural background for that. One of our local friends, Byron Stinson, had his son there. Byron owns a balcony apartment overlooking that site where we were. And his son found something very significant, and I'll share that with you if everybody stays. Okay. Alfred, Alfred Edersheim, a great Jewish scholar, Messianic Jewish scholar, wrote, This Megdal Eder was not the watchtower for the ordinary flocks which pastured on barren sheep ground beyond Bethlehem. That's where ordinary flocks pasture. But this lay close to the town on the road to Jerusalem. And to meet rabbinical and Levitical requirements, it had to be within a four-mile distance of the temple where the sacrifice was to be made. But class, the church of the nativity, which will, how many people go to the church? Well, they probably won't this year uh, because Israel's closed for now. How many people go to the church of the nativity on an average Christmas? Somebody just give me a figure. Anybody know? Mike, Scaff, you know, you're an encyclopedia. You have any idea how many people go to the church of the nativity? Thousands? Hundreds of thousands. Like half a million over a period of a week. And, and, but that's too far to have been the place where the sacrificial lamb was born. Uh, but I'm not condemning anyone. Just go find Jesus or, or let Jesus find you. I mean, all you have to do is say, okay, Lord, here I am. I open my heart to you, my mind and spirit to you. All right. Uh, it lay close to the town on the road to Jerusalem. He continues. A passage in the Mishnah, chapter 7, chapter 7 verse 4, and that's the Mishnah is here seen in figure 16, translation from the Hebrews. Okay, leads to the conclusion that the flocks, now this is a Messianic Jew, a scholar, a Jew himself, and, and a reader of all the law. The flocks which pastured there were destined for temple sacrifices. They were not simply sheep to celebrate at Hanukkah and uh, Shabbat and to be eaten by the families. They were destined for temple sacrifices, and accordingly, that the shepherds who watched over them were not ordinary shepherds. Are you learning anything new? Thus, Jewish tradition in some dim manner apprehended the first revelation of the Messiah from that Megdal Eder, where shepherds watched the temple flocks all the year round. Now, there were requirements that time in history that they, you couldn't watch them 
but you watch them in the springtime, and then you let them roam, and then you watch them in the fall. But here they were watched year round, so these are special flocks, special separates. This is direct and specific fulfillment of Michael 4 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, his first coming. Hmm, that means he'll come again, right? His first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Bethlehem is called the daughter of Jerusalem, the supply depot, the one who spiritually uh, makes the provisions for Jerusalem and for the temple, called the daughter of Jerusalem. Watch closely. What is the chance probability that this person could appear at a specific time and place as announced centuries in advance. This is Dr. Morris again giving this through Shim. And we have a friend who, an engineer who works in probability, and I read his dissertation this morning. I like it. I like it. Better than that, I love it. I mean, it's absolute truth. Uh, showing life could not have origin by evolutionary means. A rock can't produce a bird or anything else except chemistry. But watch this. Here's probability. Through Shem, from Noah's son, so what's the probability that Jesus could meet all of these requirements naturally or accidentally? Well, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So the probability through Noah's sons is one in three, Genesis 9. Through Abraham, from Shem's descendants, one in 60,000, because uh, during, uh, to that time, we have at least 60,000 people, descendants of Abraham, living at that time. Through Isaac of Abraham's son, one in eight, because there were seven other sons. Through Jacob of Isaac's sons, one in two, because Jacob only has had Isaac and, and Esau. Uh, through Judah of Jacob's sons, one in 12. Jacob had 12 sons. Through David of Daniel's sons, okay, of Judah's sons, uh, multiplicity, to the time of Christ, one in 200,000. Through Solomon of David's sons, one in 19. Ah, David had 19 sons, uh, three times 60,000, times eight, times two, times 12, times 200,000, times 19 equals one in 13 trillion, one in 13 trillion chances that Jesus could fulfill that. Factoring in the prophecy of the birth taking place in Bethlehem of Judah, the chance is one in 1,000 trillion. This probability is further compounded by the fact that his earthly guardian Joseph was a legal descendant through David's son Solomon, Matthew 1, 6, and his earthly mother Mary was a legal descendant through David's son Nathan, Luke 3, 31, factoring in the reality that he was Emmanuel, God with us, Isaiah 7, 14, and the everlasting Father manifest to us, uh, Isaiah 9, 6. We find this impossible to accomplish by human means with no chance of probability. It couldn't happen by human means. The Creator then, without the aid of human engineering, natural consequences, or universal contrivance, appeared in person. God with us.